Hello. All right, so we're here today to talk to you about Spider Lightning, a new kind of cloud systems interface. And I feel like right off the bat with this slide, we probably have lots of questions. I was in Spider Lightning, uh, cloud systems interface, new, right? So let's start answering one of the easy questions, which is who are Dan and Joe? Um, well, I'm Dan. I work with open source software at Days Labs Microsoft as a software engineer. I um, work with Rust, WebAssembly, and I like that tech so much that on my free time, I also teach people about it. So if you want to check it out, I have a YouTube channel where I teach people Rust, WebAssembly. It's called Dan Logs. Um, when I'm not doing Rust and WebAssembly, I'm you can usually find me watching Star Trek or playing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate or going for medium distances like 10K interval runs. And I work very closely with Dan on the Rise open source project Days Labs, including by the Lightning. Since the pandemic, I started enjoying attending a lot of virtual meetups. And my, I personally hold a virtual meetup called System Gossip Meetup. All right, so what are we talking to you about today? Um, this is the agenda. We'll start with presenting to you a problem. You can think of it as sort of like the motivation behind Spider Lightning, whatever that is. Then we'll talk about one approach, which, surprise, it's Spider Lightning. Um, but that will be sort of just a high level overview narrative kind of deal. Uh, we'll then move on to a deep dive into Spider Lightning itself and its trusty companion, Slight. And then we'll get more technical. We'll talk about what powers Spider Lightning, uh, move on to a tutorial on how you yourself can get started with Spider Lightning and Slight, and then a little showcase, sort of like how far you can go with this um, app demo that we've made. Uh, finish off with a little call to action. Okay, let's begin with the problem. The problem is engineering distributed applications is hard. And to illustrate that, I want to introduce you to a friend of ours, Person A. Now, Person A is a developer at the start of their career. So they, sort of out of university, they just started at a consultancy, a tech consultancy firm. And they're ready to go, ready to develop some cool software. And they just got their first client. It's the one and only, the renowned Company A. Now, Company A tells them that uh, they want to build an on-premises service to do this, this, and that. Now, I mean, person A is really excited because, I mean, this, this, and that, that's like really an opportunity to impress. So, uh, person A gets started, and now we're talking about several months later, they developed this really cool app that does this, this, and that. And we're one week away from the deliverable. They have a meeting with company A, going to show the app. But... The unexpected happens. Company A approaches them and they say, actually, scratch that. We want it on the cloud. I mean, they're Company A. We're not surprised. They can do whatever they want. They're so renowned. Um, and Person A doesn't mind. I mean, we have containers. We have Kubernetes. We'll just you know, move on-premises cloud. Not a big deal. We'll figure it out. Until they hear the rest of the sentence, which is, and on IoT devices and CDNs and edge networks. So now we have a problem because, I mean, it could be that it's too heavyweight or maybe we'll run into issues with, not, with it not being platform agnostic. So person A panics and does what I feel like everyone should do in the situation. They decide they want to explore other opportunities. And the other opportunities that they do explore is spider lightning. So they leave their first job and go learn about Spider Lightning, a new system interface for the cloud. Spent a couple of months learning about it, learning about WebAssembly, learning about all these cool things, and now they're feeling ready to re-enter the job market, and they do. And you know they say a lightning never strikes one place twice, but you know maybe a Spider Lightning does, because believe it or not, when we have person A again, they get, once again, company A at their new job wanting to make an on-premises service that does this, this, and that. Um, so person A, I mean, they're a change person at this point, so they'll develop with Spider Lightning, they'll develop with Slide, which we don't know what they are yet, but they'll use it. 
And so now, several months later, one week before the deliverable, when company A approaches them and they say, we want to run the cloud, IoT devices, CDNs, Edge, whatever, person A doesn't panic, they'll use Pilot Lightning, they'll use Light, and with only one configuration line change, they're good to go. That is sort of the motivation behind Spot Aligning. With just simple changes, you get to go. No code changes, you just change the configuration, you're good. What you had on the premises, you now have on the cloud. You have IoT, you have CDNs, you have Edge Networks. So how did Spot Aligning do all that? Let's get a bit more into that deep dive uh, right now. And the answer is it didn't, um, at least not by itself. We Spider Lightning is backed by WebAssembly. And WebAssembly by itself is bringing a bunch of the benefits here. So it's bringing this, the fact that it's lightweight, the fact that it's portable. And WebAssembly is doing that all by itself. But Spider Lightning, as sort of its name implies, is just this, this phenomenon that of like underside of uh, lightning on the underside of clouds. It's um it's fast. And fast sort of in every sense of the word. It's uh well the tech itself is fast but it's also fast in terms of developer productivity. So without any code changes, just one configuration line change, you go from premises to cloud A. There you go. Uh, okay, I mean, what is spider lining, right? We're talking about all this, and one thing, one way that we like to think about spider lining is this sort of like these collection of Lego pieces. So we have several interfaces, i.e. the Lego pieces, that all come together. So you have a key value store Lego piece. You have a message queue Lego piece. You have a pub sub Lego piece. HTTP, JRPC, uh, distributed locks, runtime configs. And you put that all together to build, of course, a mobile crane M MK2, which is analogous to your application or whatever is this, this, and that that person A built. And we do that, so you can imagine right now, Spider Lightning, we sort of set the ground floor. We have these interfaces. They're sort of this blank slate of key value, message queue, pub sub. And at the beginning of the presentation, I, men I mentioned a companion, Slight. And Spider Lightning comes together with Slight, its companion, which has, which is sort of this, it's, well, not sort of, it is the CLI that brings specific implementations onto these interfaces. So make use of these interfaces, a key value store, message queue, pub sub, distributed locks, runtime configs, HTTP, and makes use of it, and then you can use it on the CLI. So say you have your project with, uh, that has a key value store, and it's on-premises, it's using a file system, using, making use of the key value interface. You can then, if you're person A, just change it from that file system to say Redis or Azure or AWS. Sort of the idea. So that is spider lining, that is light, Let's now get a bit more technical and talk about the technology that powers it. First, it tries to achieve near co native code performance. And why do I have to put a near word here? Um, it's because WebAssembly is not a physical machine code. Um, it's a virtual code that you compile to the underlying architecture, like x86 or ARM, and then run the machines. So um, the actual combination time um, makes it suffer a little bit performance, but it's near native code performance. And uh, it is designed to be in a very compact form um, because it's a compilation target, so there are a lot of optimizations that come into the compilers uh, when you compile your programs to WebAssembly. And imagine this, the server sends JavaScript code to the client versus the server sends WebAssembly to the client. Um, the latter way is much more, the size is smaller, and so it has low latency. And WebAssembly runs in a virtual machine, and one of the biggest design is its security, and it emphasizes on software sandboxing. And what that means is the runtime actually inserts boundary checks into the WebAssembly modules to make sure that every WebAssembly module cannot escape it from its linear memory. And that means if two WebAssembly programs are running in the same machine, they cannot violate the memory of each other. And that makes it super secure. 
and also makes it portable. So I want to show you a, a quick example of a WebAssembly program. Um, we want to write a factorial function, and which takes an integer and checks if it's smaller or equal to one. Uh, if it's, then return one, otherwise recursively call factorial a minus one times n. And the code on the right side is a WebAssembly text format, or WAT in short. And it starts with a module, uh, which is the smallest unit of WebAssembly, uh, runnable WebAssembly. And inside of that module, uh, you define functions. Um, you, that function has a signature of a parameters and return values. And WebAssembly is actually typed. So um, when you compile WebAssembly, the verifier will do some type checking to make sure uh, it makes sense. And at the end of the module, we export this factorial function uh, to a given name. So now, you can use the JavaScript API to instantiate and stream this WebAssembly module, um, get the object, and then get the exports of that instance of the module, and invoke the factorial function. And that's how you um, run WASM in JavaScript. The latest and proposal to WebAssembly, um, I want to highlight is the component model, uh, which actually is a combination of two early proposals. One is called interface types, and another one is module linking. And the idea behind the component model is that WebAssembly types are great. They, are, they have i32, i64, floating 32, floating 64, and they are so general, they can represent basically everything because um, they are apparently pointers to the memory address. So it can just represent any value in the memory. Um, however, if you want to do language interpolations, you still need those higher level types like strings, uh, union types, records. Imagine if you have a stream, but without that type, you have to do like a pair of two integers. One represent the start of the stream, another one represent the length of the stream. Then it's hard to interpret that function, what that function do. So uh, we really want higher level types. And another benefit is to uh, dynamically link the components in the runtime so we can kind of compose components together to form a bigger component. Um, I like to quote um, um, Dan Goleman from Fastly, and he has the most concise one sentence description of the components. And it says a WASM component is a deployable unit of software. And that deployable word is pretty important. It means that it's usable outside the box. It has, it defines how to execute a component. Um, so you can think of the component as a executable uh, in native code. All right, so I've mentioned several design goals of WebAssembly and let me just summarize them. And the first is security. And second is portability. And the third one is performance. And those design goals align with the browsers. But we also think the, those design goals are pretty valuable for WebAssembly to run outside of the browser. And um, in the cloud, in edge networks, in de embedded devices, and other places. But there is one problem. When you bring WebAssembly outside of the browser, um, how does it talk to the underlying operating systems? Imagine you have a program that prints hello world. Um, that program, when you compile to the machine code, it has to use libc to talk to the operating system to you know, get the file descriptor, to write to that file descriptor, and call uh, proc exit. So WebAssembly is not designed to have those APIs, so that's where uh, WebAssembly system interface, or WASI, comes from. It's a, it is a standardization effort by WebAssembly community group under W3C to design a system interface um, API for WebAssembly to run in various operating systems. Um, and one thing I want to point out is it's a virtual system interface, meaning that it doesn't tie into any of the architectures or, or Linux or Windows. So um, to use the same analogy, WASM is a virtual architecture, and WASI is a virtual operating systems. And 
So now, if you have a C program that prints Hello World, um, when you compile that program to WASM, -Waz you can see that the WebAssembly module actually imports a bunch of WASM APIs, and those are imported WASM snapshot preview one, file descriptor close, file descriptor get, seek, write, and pro exit. And the WASM provides those APIs for the WebAssembly module to talk to the operating systems. So now you can run it in outside of the browser in the host. We'd like to extend that analogy to uh, above and beyond. Uh, WASM is virtual architecture. WASM is virtual operating systems. And we want um, something that represents a virtual cloud native APIs or a virtual um, distributed application capability APIs. And that's where Spider Lightning is. Um, it's, you can think about it as um, a bunch of profiles that extend the traditional POSIX like WASI to have capabilities for your distributed applications like key value store, HTTP, message queue, distributed locks, and such. And we are working closely with the community to drive the specifications for those capabilities. Um, and if you're not familiar with WASI, they have uh, proposals, and each proposal has like different phases. And Spider Lightning capabilities are WASI um, phase one proposals, and and that means the community agrees that it's very valuable to drive uh, further designs and specifications for those capabilities. Um, and here I want to shout out to tomorrow's WASM Day. It's a co-located event at KubeCon where there are a lot of talks about the component model, about WASI, and um, you should take a look. All right, so to just uh, go into more details, the component model comes with the IDL to um, define your interfaces, and that IDL is called WIT, WebAssembly Interface Types. Um, so I'm showing one of the capabilities in Spider Lightning, which is key value store. So you can write the key value store interface in this weak syntax. It starts with a resource key, called key, key value, and it has a bunch of operations, get, set, keys, list keys, delete, and watch. Um, and we have other capabilities also written in the WIT files. And the point is that these are interfaces, and anyone can write an implementation for those interfaces. Um, slide introduced by Dan is an example of um, implement host implementation for those interfaces. All right. So right now, we're getting into tutorial time. So how can you get started with Slide and Spider Lightning? Now the venue is cleverly designed so that I don't show up on screen if the demo fails. So I'm just going to walk over here and bring up the terminal. I'm going to open a new window. And hopefully, we can make this big enough. Is that? Yeah? OK. So um, I mean, before coming here, what I did is I just installed WebAssembly things. Um, and installs Lite, which is just one simple command. If you go in our GitHub repo, you can install yourself, and it's very easy setup. But when you have that done, all you have to do to start a new Lite project is you can say Slite um, new, pass in a name for a project. We'll call this one Spidey, and a specific version of the key value, or not the key value, the interfaces that you want to use, like the key value one. So we'll say v01. And next up, you say the language of a uh, project that you want to set up. Right now, we have it set up so you can have C projects, Rust projects. So for this example, I'll start a new Rust project. Now that will work, all right. Um, now let's cd into Spidey and quickly ls. So if you're familiar with Rust, you'll see we have a cargo toml file, just a manifest. You have a Slide file, which is the configuration file for Slide, the one that person A just had to change one line for. And a source folder just has the, our main business logic and a WIT folder 
which contains the interfaces that we're using. So let's check out that WIT folder. We'll go to WIT, will um, ls, and you see we're using the key value interface at 0, uh, 001, or 010. And that's just the interface that jo uh, Joe showed a couple of slides ago. Exactly the same thing. Now let's cd back um, and show, yeah, let's show this light file. So in here, you see we're using a spec version of 01, hopefully. And you're using a secret store, so we're loading configurations from environment variables. We're not actually making use of any configurations, but it's there just for display purpose. And you're using one capability, with a key, which is a KV, so that's the interface, and file system, that's the implementation. So one side you have spider lightning, bring in the KV. One side you have slide, bring in the file system. And so I actually display the business logic that we have. So CD in into source, I'll do a cat on our main file. And in here, you can ignore sort of the first lines. That's sort of just generating the code that comes from our interface um, and generating um, specific error implementations for our error type. But that aside, the main thing I want us to focus on is that we're opening a key value store, which we called my folder. Um, we're then setting a key on that key value store, which uh, has a key of hello spider lining, and it says the value of hello spider lining. And we're then printing that. So, I mean, you can imagine when we run this, if it works, we'll get a nice hello spider lining. So let's CD back. Now, to build with Rust, you'll say cargo build, um, and we're going to target WASM32 WASI. And this should take six seconds. Anyone knows any six second jokes? Never mind. It is done in 569. Okay. With that, we now have a WebAssembly module that we can run with Slight. So let's do exactly that. We'll say Slight. We'll pass in our configuration, our Slight file. And then we'll do Run. And we'll pass in a WASA module. When you build with cargo build, that should be located instead of target, um, wasm32, and we build it in debug. So we should have a spidey dot wasm. Hello, spider lightning. All right. So that is how you yourself can get started with spider lightning. And if you want to add new interfaces, we also have, with the CLI, you can do slight add, add other interfaces, add runtime configs, whatever you want, and have fun with it. But. Other than that, we also want to show, because that's not cool enough, we want to show how far you can go with Slight and Spider Lightning. And to show you just that, we've prepared a um, demo of a chat app, which I will boot up. So we can close this terminal. Now, we developed this um, using you on the front end, that's a Rust front end framework. So it's all WebAssembly on the front end and on the back end. So let's start that right now. We'll do a make uh, serve. That boots up our front end. Good. We're running. We'll do a make run. This boots up our back end. Good. And this is being backed by Redis. So we'll run Redis server. Cool. So right now, if we go to 127, we get something that looks sort of like a chat app, or we'll look once I zoom in. All right, so on the bottom, we have what you want to say. That's sort of the input text field that you can say. And on the top, you see that we're logged in as this very user-friendly line of characters. And But I mean, a chat app isn't much with only one person, so let's get another user in. And there we go. We have another user. Let's put them side by side. One and two. And now, fingers crossed, when we say hello, we get hello on both sides. And we can say hi. And we get hi. Oh, I should have said that with the other user. Let's say hi with the other user. And there we go. We get it on both sides. And that's entirely powered by Slight, you on the front end, Slight on the back end, which Joe will explain more just about 
now. Yeah, we are out of time, but I will quickly mention the architecture that uh, powers the chat up backend. We have two microservices. One is the HTTP server that uh, listen to the request of uh, send request and get message request. And we have a dispatcher service that just uh, dispatch the messages to all the user in that group chat. Um, and those two services are compiled to WebAssembly uh, with spider lightning capabilities and run in slide. The HTTP server has, uh, is using a message queue capability to send the message to that queue so that dispatcher can get the message from the, pop the message from the, from the, of the queue, and it's also logging the users into a key value store for persistent reasons. And that dispatcher will dispatch the message to the user queues. So each user in a group chat will have their own queue um, to get the messages. So each get request come to the HTTP server, uh, you will locate that user specific user queue to get a message outside of the queue um, to return to the front end. And uh, believe it or not, those two microservices can be um, uploaded to a Docker container and run in a Kubernetes. And that Docker container for each service is about 600 kilobytes. So that Docker container uh, only have one slide file and one wiser module, no operating system on top of it. And that's it. Thank you everyone for listening. Yeah, thank you so much. Go ahead. Like, uh, and you, Joe, can you repeat the question for the screen? Um, so in the beginning of the slide, you showed a bunch of different implementations, including AWS and Redis and things like this, uh, and also Azure. Like, are you intend to have a lot of implementation for a lot of things? Um, we are doing, so the question is, are we going to have multiple implementations for capabilities? And the answer is yes. Um, we want to have different cloud implementations for those capabilities as well as OSS components. Um, and we are doing this per user request. Yeah, and that's actually part of what we mean with the slide of let's build cool stuff together. You know, Spider Lightning and Slide, they're built very modularly. So it's very easy to contribute. If you want to contribute a new interface, you just go and you write a WIT file. If you want to contribute a new um, service implementation, all you need to know is the SDK for that implementation itself and just implement the WIT interface. So we would love contributions on GitHub. Go ahead. Um, what logic or logic or exploit model or specification or feature are you most excited about? Like what will make like add to that? I have one, do you know? Or actually just revoicing the question. So uh, you're asking what are like WebAssembly, WebAssembly component model, WASI, things that we're most excited about in the near future. Do you have one? I'm most particularly excited about the world's um, PR that we're getting yeah. in. Yeah, I'm excited about the word syntax that you can have different profiles, or we call it words, of different capabilities. Um, and you can use them, um, use different parts of those Lego pieces in your application. You don't have to bundle them together or bundle them with WASI. Um, that's, and another one I'm thinking about is the um, component model itself is a game changer. It introduces those higher level types that makes writing the capabilities as interfaces possible. So that's that's the foundation of it. Yeah, so hopefully in the future you can imagine spider lining itself as sort of like a world or the key values of spider lining as a world and very much excited for that. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so the question is, is WASI and spider lining compatible with cloud native events? Yeah, cloud events. Mm -hmm. 
um, we actually have a uh, events capability, and that events capability uh, it's pretty similar to the HTTP server. Uh, you can listen, so each um, capabilities like key value or message queue, uh, we want them to have a kind of like a watch function. You can watch for the key change to that key value store and that will emit a cloud event and um, you can write those event handlers um, in your application to handle those events. So that's part of it. Yeah, a lot of that work still has to be done. For sure we've only implemented watch for key value store. Yes. So. That is also another good point to contribute. All right. Any other questions? Great. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you so much.